we come together to celebrate the fullness of the wreath now totally lit on this fourth week of this time of Advent. And we invite God to have total access to us as, as we long for total access to him. So let us begin our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, on this day, the time of preparation draws near. We're invited to look over what is taking place this Advent season in our personal lives and also what we're looking forward to. And we ask God now to give us mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the fulfillment of the promises. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of the resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, you should build me a house to dwell in. It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be the commander of my people Israel. I have been you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And while I make you famous like the great ones of the earth, I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old. Since that time, I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when the time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. 
Your throne shall sta stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever I confirm your prosperity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of of the Lord. He shall say to me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness towards him, and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all the nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 May it be done to me according to your word. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, 
Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is in the sixth month for her, who was called barren. For nothing is impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In these times, we reflect on how we have had access to God through covenants and prophets. We also have worked hard and diligent in this time of Advent to allow God to have access to us. During these times, I I found myself doing a little bit more shopping on the internet. And one of the things that I needed to replace was my, run, my running shoes, which are run walking shoes. And, and so I really needed to do that on the internet. And that was pretty uncomfortable for me. It was a real expansion of my place of comfortability. But because I had shoes from that company and and, and knew exactly what size and what model I was looking for, I went to the internet for the search. And when I got to the website, I realized that all the new in colors were like pink and peach, colors that I didn't think would look good on my feet, nor am I fast enough to be able to run in that type of a color. So. I decided to to use the option where you can create your own. It was only a few more dollars, and and you can pick the color. So I was going to go after something a little bit more mature, like blue or a marine teal or or something like that. So I I picked the the model that I wear, and and I went and found a a color which was like blue-green, which was always my favorite crayon in the 64 crayon box. And I was really happy and picked a contrasting symbol on it. And because you could personalize it, you also could add some numbers on the back uh, of the heel. So I decided that I would pick some special numbers. Now, you might think I might have picked John 316, but realistically, I did pick the day of my ordination. So uh, I picked that, and that's on there in my initials. And so they were very personalized, and I was really excited. And they told me that they would arrive before Christmas, which was going to be fantastic. 
placed the order. Well, to my surprise, not only were they great in communication, saying that, you know, it's almost finished, and it, they came early. So now I have the, these new running shoes. But when I opened up the box, there was a little bit of a shock. The shock was is that it defaulted to white shoelaces. Now, on these beautiful shoes that, that have been personalized, they were supposed to be a yellowish gold, and, and they're white, and it just didn't look right. So I went to the Internet and got the 800 number and called customer service, and they were wonderful. Customer service said, well, here's what we do. You just pack those back up, and, and, and UPS will pick them up, and, and then go back to the website and start all over. And just order yourself a new pair of shoes. And I said, well, these were personalized. I mean, they, they've got my initials on them. They, they have the year of my ordination. What are you going to do with them? And I said, oh, well, you know, we'd either try to sell them. I'm like, selling shoes with my initials on them? Hopefully they'd go to a runner that was faster, but that just didn't seem right. Or if they can't sold in, in about 30 days, they either do, donate them or destroy them. So I said, thank you very much, and hung up and decided that I would call back the next day. So the next morning, I call, hoping to get somebody else on customer service that would just send me out some shoelaces. That's all I wanted was a different color shoelaces. This was a cosmetic thing, more in my head than anything that was really needed. Customer service, I get a different person. They tell me the same story. I was a little bit surprised. That, wow, just because of one little blemish, one little thing, we just throw the whole thing out. I wasn't really comfortable with that. So I ended up just, you know, on one of my walks through the mall, going to the shoe store and, and just picking up some, some different lace, laces that, that fit wonderfully and look great and, and, and everything is, is right with the running shoe world for me. So often times, we think that once something isn't right, it gets thrown out. Today in the gospel, the angel Gabriel breaks through to allow Mary to know that there is an incredible covenant. A Savior is going to come to the house of David that will never end. And Mary questions that in a very simple way. How can this be? How can this be? And yet the angel Gabriel reassured her that God will make sure that it does happen and that nothing is impossible for God. And as we enter into this fourth week of Advent, that's the invitation for us. We may enter it with lots of questions. We may echo those words. How can this be? How can all these things be happening? But nothing is impossible for God. And more importantly, God doesn't throw us out. God doesn't just look at our sinfulness, our brokenness, and, and decides not to have a covenant with us. God made a promise to his people the book of Samuel through, through David. There would be a covenant with David that would last forever. We are recipients of that covenant and that promise. And, and God doesn't throw us out, even if this hasn't been the most perfect advent in our lives. And, and even though things may be very stressful, and even though we might be questioning and, and unbelieving and, and all those things and saying, how can this all be? Can I truly trust it? Is it real? Nothing is impossible for God. He doesn't throw it out. He doesn't send it to a pile. He doesn't destroy it. That's what our society does. But that isn't God. God is in complete contrast and invites us to trust for nothing is impossible with God.
as a holy people united in faith, we now proclaim that common belief. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a holy people of God, realizing that nothing is impossible for God, we now offer our prayers and petitions. We pray for the church throughout the world that it may continue to be a beacon of hope in dark times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as well for our nation and our world that faith may unite us and strengthen us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as well for all of those who face the tragedies given to us through this virus. We pray for those recovering with courage and caregivers and first responders who face illness and sickness every day. That they may know of God's light and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as well for all those involved in educational decisions and decision-making, that in this time of break, there may be a time of being renewed in its importance and in what is to take place. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that God may reach out to those who feel nothing is possible and nothing has gone right. We pray that they may find faith and faith may find them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the intentions that have been placed upon our altar and for the intentions that you bring with you on this day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you gift us with time, you gift us with promise, you gift us us with promise covenants. Allow us to know and embrace the possibilities of your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is sweet, right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with a love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of the Nativity, that when he comes, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. And so the angels and archangels with thrones and dominions with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, who always walks with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine. that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. Breaking the bread, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks... handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, our Savior, whom you led through the passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you now this bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which you show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and granted by the power of the spirit of your love. We may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. 
And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity together with Francis, our Pope, with Ronald, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people as we walk your ways with faith and hope that we may strive to bring joy and trust into this world. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place to live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Anne, the Mother of Mary, and with all the saints, that we may praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us take a moment to share peace with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so may we press forward all the more eagerly to be to the worthy celebration of this mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We look forward to these last days of Advent, but more importantly, welcoming everyone to the celebration of the nativity of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And so, we have a parking lot mass at 3 o'clock where everything will be transmitted. We invite you to decorate cars. The parking lots will be opened at 2, and the celebration begins at 3. All of the other celebrations will be here in church and in Anniversary Hall. We can't guarantee because of social distancing and how things will go where exactly you'll be seated, but we will do our best. And after the church and Anniversary Hall is filled, if others come longing to be welcomed into church, we will invite them also to, to stay with us in the parking lot in the safety of their own vehicles because we will be at capacity and we will make sure that Eucharist is given to them. We will find ways to overcome all the barriers because when this mystery speaks, we want to respond. But we realize that inside the building, we'll only be able to hold just a fraction of all those who want to be touched by the holiness of this mystery. It is our pledge to do as best we can at all the different celebrations. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.